Hey guys, in today's video I want to talk about how to choose your mouthpiece. Now, uh, yeah, I have a few tips and yeah, this is what we're going to be talking about today. But first, if this is the first time that we meet, my name is Rafan on this channel, we talk about brass playing, we talk about technique, we talk about the trombone, we do some play along exercises so that we can exercise together, we do some arrangements and so on. So if this is interesting to you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So what I wanted to say before is that the first tip in choosing a mouthpiece is not choose your mouthpiece um, according to what people advise you to choose on the forum, on the internet, or whatever. Choosing a mouthpiece is extremely, extremely personal uh, because we all have a different embouchure, we all have a different physiology of our teeth and our, uh, our way of playing. Some people play more on the sides. I know some an amazing player that play completely on the side. Go figure. Um, uh, some, some people play with more upper lip, with more uh, down lip, some people have bigger lips, some people have, you know what I mean. So it's really up to your physiology, to your um, morphology, to how your face is made, you know. So don't go on a forum and just say, hey, what mouthpiece should I use for bass trombone? And people are going to say. So there, but there are some standards and this, I, I just want to tell you like how I went. So I was, before I was playing only euphonium and valve trombone and tenor trombone, basically little mouthpieces. I was playing on the Prana 6S. It is a Monet mouthpiece. It is a very little mouthpiece. I even played on the Prana 11 at some point which is a lead trombone mouthpiece and when I switched to bass trombone I couldn't play on too much of a big mouthpiece so I went to the standard which was the 3G it's kind of the standard for people that um, play both instruments tenor and bass so the Bach 3G and after a while at first I thought wow this is so big it is huge um, and uh, but I got used to it, you know. After a few weeks of practicing, I started having a little bit more comfort in the low register, and then I figured I need more space. And when I needed more space, I went to this guy, which is a big, heavy mouthpiece. Uh, it's pretty cool because it has my name engraved. It is a Greg Black 2G heavy mouthpiece. At that point, I figured that I needed to play gold because I was having a lot of allergies with my silver one. So I went into a 2G and then I switched to a Wrath 1 1 quarter which was really really too big so I went back down to a Bach 1 and a half G which was not very comfortable and then I went back to Greg Black and Greg Black has this model, I'm not sponsored by the way, it's 138 G so 138 uh, G and it is a medium uh, mouthpiece and I've been playing on this for years now and that's it, I'm done choosing mouthpieces. I think that this is the best that I have now. If one day I figure that I need to change, then I'll change. But I know some people that change mouthpieces every single month and this is just too much because you're relying more on the equipment than on yourself. And you are the instrument, you're the core of the instrument. You make the sound, you need to practice in a certain way that you will have a good sound. So how do you get to that perfect mouthpiece? Well, this is the perfect mouthpiece for me. First of all, it is not too big. So a lot of bass trombone players think that the bigger the better, right? So a lot of people, I see people play on huge mouthpieces. Um, and the way that I know instantly that the mouthpiece is too big is A, the intonation isn't great, B, they have no upper register, and C, when they go in the middle to like, like a normal B flat and a little bit higher, you lose the center, you hear like a brrrr kind of sound and that just means that the mouthpiece is too big. Some people just play on ridiculously big mouthpieces. Some people choose their mouthpiece because their favorite player plays on that brand and that mouthpiece and that is, you know, it's a bit ridiculous. I can understand, you know, because we all have idols, we all have people that we look up to but they don't have the same mouth as you, so it's not going to be the right size for you. So how do you choose a mouthpiece? This is kind of the theme of the video. Well, it needs to be something that is A, comfortable. B, you need to check out in the range. 
if you have a good sound throughout the range. Now if you play bass trombone, don't focus only on those really bass notes, don't focus only on the pedal notes. Try the mouthpiece in the upper register also. Do you have a good upper register? Is it, does it feel too large? Do you have not enough resistance because it's just too big this way? Um, is it comfortable? Can you play hours on it? So for me, I don't like when the mouthpiece rim is too thin because it just cuts my lips. I really, really don't like it. And so, you know, for me, I need a more round and larger mouthpiece, a larger rim. But I know some people that find it really, really comfortable to have a very slim uh, rim. So, you know, whatever works for them. So check out your intonation, check out your um, your, your range, do you have a good sound throughout the range? Um, check out some mouthpieces, you'll find that you need to do more movement than on other mouthpieces. So if it's a really good high quality mouthpiece, usually you won't have to move your embouchure so much um, because it just reacts really well to the vibration in all the ranges, in all the tessitures. Is this a good word? I'm not sure, but that, that you know, and Greg Black is perfect for this. Monet also advertises itself as that, and it's true that you don't really need to move on a Monet because it's just it just vibrates so easily. Um, another thing that you should try when you try the mouthpiece is uh, tonguing. How are you with tonguing? Do you, do you feel that there's too much space or too little space, or how how do you feel? You know, like you really need to try those mouthpieces when you purchase a mouthpiece. So. If you don't have the opportunity to try a lot of different mouthpieces, which was my case actually, I, I actually bought this on the internet, but I did so much research on the different sizes and I tried so many different sizes that I knew that this was the perfect size. I didn't know if that was the perfect mouthpiece, but I already played on a Greg Black some years before. So I kind of did the math in my head, okay, this is the perfect size, it's also for my favorite maker, it always sounds really good. I know that this is a little bit too heavy because it's a bit too centered, the vibration is a little bit too compact, so I, I knew that I needed this size from this brand at this weight, and of course I knew that I needed the gold, and when I got it, yes, it was perfect. But this is after years and years and years of not only research on the forums, but on trying things, on trying different brands. I tried Grigo, I tried Bach, I tried Monet, I tried Greg Black, I tried... Um, I don't know, uh, uh, Dennis Wick, I tried uh, a lot of different kind of mouthpiece, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So try as many as you, as you can, but then stick to one, you know. I, I see people switching m every month to some mouthpieces and that is not because they didn't find the right mouthpiece, it's because they didn't take the time to adapt to their mouthpiece. You need to adapt to your mouthpiece, your whole chops need to adapt to your mouthpiece. And another, another suggestion is don't make such a big deal out of it, you know, it's just a mouthpiece. Here is your playing. So if you need more low register, you know, use your air better. If you need better high register, use your air better. If you need uh, better dynamics, use your air better. We play wind instrument, not mouthpiece instrument. And chances are the problems that you have with your playing comes from yourself. So only move mouthpieces if you've tried everything possible within yourself, within your practice routine. If you have a teacher maybe ask for advice, a good teacher will see instantly if you're playing with the right mouthpiece. Now, I don't want to blow my horn and I don't want to seem arrogant, but I can see instantly if people are playing on the right mouthpiece or the wrong mouthpiece. Um, and usually it's, it's, very, it's very easy because you have like somebody with a tiny little embouchure but that wants to play a big bass trombone sound so he thinks he needs to play that big bass trombone mouthpiece but that's not the case. I've seen people play on contrabass trombone mouthpieces on the bass trombone so that they can play pedal notes but the pedal notes are not clear, they're not centered, the sound isn't compact enough to have like a really good bass trombone sound because the mouthpiece is too big so it's not because you play the bass trombone that you're going to have a huge mouthpiece and similarly it's not because you play lead trombone that you're going to try to play on the trumpet mouthpiece. You need the right mouthpiece that is appropriate to A, the sound that you want to produce and B, the physiology that you have right here. Also taking into account the cheeks, 
but yeah, don't obsess on, on your mouthpiece. Uh, that's it for today, actually. I think I said everything that I had to say. If you have any comments, please put them down below in the comment section. Tell me uh, what mouthpiece you play on, how you got to playing on that mouthpiece, why is that your favorite mouthpiece, um, what is your technique for trying out mouthpieces, etc., so that we can have a conversation together. If you've liked this video, if it brought you any kind of value, please put a thumbs up. And if you've not done so already, please subscribe to that channel. I really appreciate your support. And uh, yeah, until next time, I'll see you later. Ciao.